Hi guys, welcome to another episode from the Lure Fishing Podcast. This is episode eight, and Tom's still here with us, which is fantastic. Me, we, Eccles, we, cakes and tea. Yeah. In we, the break. Um, bribed him with um, cups of tea, which was great. Um, really enjoyed episode seven. That was mm. great, getting into your the mindset. Yeah. Um, but now, we're going to get into the... I'm scared, what's he going to ask? The dark world. <laughs> the, dark, the new... Yeah. It's, Very new. Well, it seems new to me, it but I'm new. old. The new world of um, sponsored angler, commercial right. angler, yeah, um, full pro time staff, angler, pro, pro staff, whatever yeah, they're it. called. There's, there seems to be so many different types of labels mm-hmm. that there is a lot of layers. Everybody seems to be wanting to be part of. Yeah, that you look at things and go, oh. They're only five years old. How are they already sponsored by? Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's amazing how these things happen. So uh, yeah, we're going to be a, a little bit flippant with it as well. So no apologies to anybody. But we're, we're going to delve deep and we're going to take the the mick out of. Um, Several people, including yourselves, probably yes. as well. Mate, so, you've yeah. always got to be one and one and two on the old see you next Tuesday list. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to treat this a bit like an onion. Yeah, yeah. we're going to peel them back. Or you we? start from the inside and work our way out. Well, it's. I think, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's come from, whether it's an American thing, but. Lure fishing in this country it only has three to four percent of the retail trade, so mm-hmm. I'm told, but it's the fastest growing aspect of the sport of angling in the country. Yeah. But if you look on social media, on Instagram and uh, Facebook, and I've got several little labels under my in my bio. Yeah. Um, lots of anglers seem to be attached to lots of companies or mm-hmm. one company or so forth and so on, and it seems to be quite a new phenomenon. Mm. Yeah, my, relatively new. I'd say mm. the last three to five years, definitely the last five years, so not three years. It just seems to have gathered pace. Yeah, and you see it mentioned a lot yeah. on topics, don't you? Yeah. So I mean, Tom's got his Western outfit on because yeah. he's got a great um, relationship with Western these days. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec because you had a definite mindset, didn't you, about doing that? Yeah, yeah. I've got an affiliation with Wolf Creek Lures and. Fortunately now, um, other companies as well, like Vision, Predator Tackle, that type of thing. Um, but I think people get the wrong impression. I mm. think people think, oh, you're getting paid. Oh, yeah. you're getting this, you're getting that. Yeah. And that's the onion part, isn't it? The layers, that peeling back different types of it. Because it's not what it seems. And people have got bios and they go, oh, sponsored by da da da. And you, you look into it and go, no, you're not. Because you actually get 10% off mm. and that's it. Well, I think that's <laughs> that's kind of like, probably it? a good place to start. So I will try and explain this and be objective as possible. Well, you've because... got the best input because you've seen more. Yeah, well, okay, that's yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah, well, there's... Uh, and, and I think what you've got to try and understand is that there's... Everyone's got an angle and everyone's got an agenda. And that depends on whether you're a non-sponsored angler and you want to berate someone because they pretend to be or are a sponsored angler you've got the companies that want their own agenda they want promotions they want talk they want column inches they want instagram pictures you've then got individuals sometimes it comes down to ego sometimes it comes down to a strategy like for me uh, probably there's a bit of ego in there somewhere you know like for all of us it feels quite nice yep. well, but at the same time it's it's yeah. part of a strategy that yeah. i've explicitly set out for myself to associate with the right brands for my journey of what mm-hmm. i want to do you know and i think the mismatch is really where people are in their own little world or their own bubble and there's lots of fingers pointing on and it's all from different directions and actually when you understand most of the directions and most of the layers it actually becomes fairly self-explanatory and yeah. fairly understandable. So I would say from a... So my sort of personal journey, um, I'll take a few minutes just to go through that as a context, was um, so previous to like in the fishing world, when I had my outdoor pursuits business, you build up 
a business that becomes successful, you start getting, you know, I was getting uh, uh, double page spreads in the Guardian and, and um, you know, various different magazines. We were in top 10 lists of outdoor things to do in the UK. We were uh, doing various different filming bits on like for Channel 4 and BBC 2 and all of that sort of stuff. And then inevitably, when you start getting a bit of buzz around your name or your business a brand comes along and goes oh this is quite cool like can we hunter send you some wellies mm -hmm. and cool and then they send you some wellies and you use them you have a very basic relationship with them and then you start working with more brands and stuff so pre-fishing world i had a fairly good understanding from a business point of view as both the on-screen guy but I was also running my business so I was thinking what's good for my business what do they want so it's a relationship so coming into the coming into the fishing world I'd done predator fishing for a long time I'd been in match fishing and I basically decided I really wanted to get going started creating some good results started catching some good fish and then ended up with a random opportunity at Gunky uh, was with them for like two years brilliant brand manager at the time in the UK, a chap called Alex. He was young, he was hungry, he was intelligent, um, and, and we hit it off, and we really sort of felt like we kind of grew the brand quite well for the couple of years that we were there. Cut a long story short, there was a couple of internal things that happened at Gunky. Alex was treated in a certain way, won't go into any details, but like, it then just kind of lost the spark for me. Mm. And what felt like really cool, just six months before, mate, we, we went over to France, we went to the HQ, we met up with Frederick Julian, you know, big beard, famous sort of uh, now ex-gunky as well, Simon Torenbeek, who's now at, at um, Abu uh, Garcia. Um, you know, all of these guys that, that were like dynamic and interesting and there was some cool stuff going on. And then six months later, Fred had left, Simon had left, Alex had been treated badly and I was just like, on a personal basis, don't want to be associated with this anymore. Just said to them, hanging my hat in, that's it. But my personal profile at the time was winning lots of tournaments, winning big fish, you know. So I, to a certain degree, I kind of, I didn't, I'd, I'd left a job and it was just a get free kit. There was no money involved at that stage, but I did have a budget for free kit. And I left that without having another one to go to. But I was confident that I was, you know, going to find a new relationship. <coughs> Over the next kind of few months, I then had probably three, four, five, four or five different companies from small to big say, oh, we're interested, we heard you're back on the market, would you want to be with us and all that sort of stuff. And in, in true transparency, I actually approached Westin off the back of a con uh, conversation that I'd had with Luke Coppens at the previous big one when I'd been with Gunky, I was on the lure stand giving a talk about various different things and Luke came up to me and he said to me, you happy at Gunky? And I said, yeah, I'll be honest, I am happy with Gunky at the moment. He said, cool, if anything ever changes, you give me a call. So I had a number of different other brands, but Westin wasn't one of them. Mm -hmm. And I love Westin, I'd love Westin even when I was with Gunky. So I phoned Luke up and I said, look, this is the story, I'm back on the market, I'd love to come in your direction. So I asked them, sort of, started that conversation. Um, and, you know, I'm a big believer that you've only got a certain number of moves. Yeah. You know, you've only got a certain number of brands because otherwise you fall into that category of being the guy that just goes, this is the latest thing. And then next week you're going, no, no, this is now the latest thing and I'm wearing a different cap with a different brand and stuff. Yeah. And I'm more of a long-term guy. That's my personal strategy. So I ended up with Westin and I said to them, look, I want to move into the industry. They said, cool, we'll start you off on this deal. And I was like, that deal's not good enough. So they upped the deal, but it was still probably about half of what I was being offered by other brands. But this is where you've got to make the right decisions for you. You've got to align yourself with the right brand, that type of stuff. And if you ever come across as desperate, then I think you're done. Mm -hmm. You're done straight from the mm -hmm. get-go, right? So I then ended up getting an opportunity with them and I said, cool, but I, need, I would like, I'm going to prove myself to you and I, w I would like to see an opportunity within the next 12 to 24 months. Then COVID happened, it wasn't great, but then within the next 24 months, 
uh, an opportunity arose. West End was growing so big. I was part of the marketing team as such. And, and now I've, they basically offered me a job, which is paid to do the marketing and, and a sales role as well. You know, so I've, I've moved myself through that kind of uh, uh, sponsorship thing into the semi-sponsorship, semi-job. So the marketing side, I still put in the sponsorship thing, which I get paid for. And then the job is the sales side of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there's not many of those opportunities. And they're like rocking horse poo when they come along. Yeah. And you've got to be at the... I think you've got to work really hard to get up there in terms of your profile, type of person you are, connections you've got, well, several, everything. There's several things that you spoke about then that people need to pick up on. You met Luke because you were at the one... The a big, big one. one, yeah. And you were actually doing stuff for Gunky. Yeah. You know, and you were part... You understand... Uh, you, that's what... When you're, when you're representing a brand, that's one of the things you're asked to do. Yeah. And you... you that's not the first time you'd have done that. You'd have done seven of those yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And these things happen if you're good. Yeah. So you're a very eloquent speaker. You present superbly well. So that, that helps as well, doesn't yeah. it? And I think that's important that people pick up here. There's, it's not about catching big fish. It's not about winning competitions. There are so many other pieces of the jigsaw. Because yeah, the guys yeah, you were yeah. speaking about at the beginning are still big players mm. yeah. in it because they have fantastic reputations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and absolutely. You see the They're same, hot property. Yeah, yeah, you know. You see the same guys like on the Euro EFL, European Fishing yeah. League that was out recently. Yeah. Well, they're the same people who will be on Fly vs. Church. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah, will yeah. be on whatever, the Xander Pro or Perch yeah. Pro because they have a very high regard and standing within the lure community throughout Europe. Yes. I mean, I yeah. know... I don't know Klaus Clausen brilliantly, but I know him well enough to go and speak to him and say, hello, Andy, blah, 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 yeah. and drop his trousers and say, show me his latest musky tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, someone like him is one of the hottest properties around. Yeah. Chance, one yeah. he just, he's, he's a lovely guy. Yeah. Fantastic backstory. When you get to know him, he tells you about, he's a chef. Mm. Yeah. He's like the, the Swedish Gordon Ramsay. Really? He, yeah. Yeah, but he's got a, he struggled with, there's all, all I won't go into, it's not, not my story to tell, but other things that, from being a chef, you know, chef's deal with all the high yeah. pressure job. Yeah, yeah. And he's, I mean, he's been dry now for, I think, 24 years. Right. So it's a massive bat story with us as well. He's such a fantastic guy. But people like, these people, they're unique, mm. yeah. aren't they? And they, that, there's a reason why they are where they are. Because it's not just their fishing, it's the other things they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, I think we've all, all of us, he's sitting here on this table, have probably had this conversation with each other and with others, that there's different things different people can offer for a company yeah. um, and you have there's a few different what I'd sort of bracket people into you have your big fish anglers who catch big fish regular, regular enough to call them big fish anglers yeah. you have your tournament guys who do well repeatedly in tournaments mm -hmm. and consistency is good and then you have what I, a, a quite a new one I think and it's almost a little bit limited to lure angling in the UK and that's what I call what a new term an influencer right yeah someone who has a presence on social media be yeah. it Instagram be it YouTube, be it whatever, they're not necessarily catching big fish, they're not necessarily catching or, or doing well in tournaments, but they're producing content that's engaging and people are, are linking with. Yeah. To a company, to it's quite an, an attractive thing because they've got a predetermined audience for you to, yeah. to, to connect with that you might not have connected with otherwise. So there's a few different things there and each of those different brackets offer different things in different ways. Yeah. And I think people have to understand that Companies can offer these different people different things without them being separate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you have these yeah. layers. Like you can, like the, it the, does get really messy otherwise because yeah. it's like someone goes, oh, well, uh, you, you're not that good. Yeah. And it's like, maybe I'm not trying to be that good, but I've got an audience of yeah. 20,000 people. Yeah. You know, and it's, I think probably like one thing I can think of, we can go through a few misconceptions mm -hmm. and that starts with... Um, I think maybe explicitly, like the the term sponsorship is very broad, very broad, and it's probably worth going through a few different of you know start at the start. So what I would say we're is peeling back the onion. Yeah, we're it's starting. This is the taking off the, the put the your goggles on the brown skin. <laughs> um, so what I would say is you've got the 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 first rung of the ladder. Yeah. is you associate yourself with normally a shop yeah. or an outlet. Yeah. And they obviously get trade prices. Shops want to promote themselves as well to get as many audience there as possible. Mm -hmm. And they will offer someone 
you know, they haven't got a mega budget, you know, like Westin might have as a marketing department, but they get this stuff for free. Um, not for free, they get it at trade. So there's a little bit of margin that they can play with and they can say, oh, you can come on my team and you can have 10% off and you can come on my team and you can have 20% off mm. or whatever the deal might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like, you're still paying for your stuff, but you're yeah. getting it at a cheaper rate. Yeah. Right. And in association with that, you do a deal with whoever the shop or outlet might be, for example, that might say, you know, might have a little contract that just says, oh, you wear our T-shirts and you do this, that and the other and you help out at some trade shows or whatever it might yeah. be. You know, but the, the level of the angler and this isn't denigrating anyone because it's always a journey. We mm -hmm. all start yep. somewhere. Yeah. And if you want to start climbing that ladder, then you can. Because mm -hmm. also, for many people out there, they couldn't care less. No. I know people, like there's people in the England team that like, not interested in a discount, not yep. interested in doing, like they just want to focus on their fishing, mm -hmm. top of their game. They don't do social media, they don't want a discount, and they're not interested in a brand. Yep. So it's off the table for them, and then that's not a problem. But mm -hmm. if you're then becoming to get interested, you start at the bottom, work with one of those and the problem then comes because there's a continuum going all the way up to people that are paid mm. they're all called sponsored anglers yeah. and what really irks people is when you see someone else who you know is either quite young quite inexperienced or maybe not that good yet mm -hmm. wanting to call themselves pro or a, or a sponsored angler or whatever and they're effectively trying to piggyback off the better quality yeah. anglers that have spent the time and earned it. And that disparity really kind of can wind few people up. Yeah. So all I would say is if you do want to get into it, get in it at the right level and be humble that that's mm -hmm. your lane and stay in your lane until you produce results, whether that's a YouTube channel, whether that's tournament results, whether it's big fish or whatever, mm -hmm. you stay in your lane because that's what earns people's respect. Absolutely. I think the word's authenticity. Yeah, exactly. If, you keep, if you're authentic, yeah. You've got that is a huge because mm -hmm. companies aren't daft. No. Yeah. They will work out people really quickly. Like and neither's the public. Yeah. And everyone talks. Yeah. Everyone talks. People forget that the, the especially when you like we said before, when you dial things right down, you go right the, the fit there's fishing, there's fishing in the UK, there's lure fishing in the UK yeah. and they all talk they all every, everyone talks to each other, so it's a very, very tight knit community. Yeah, it, it word gets around very quickly. People Mate, if you're that. if you're trying to pull a fast one because you're trying to pretend to be something that you're not yet, then it just you know some people love the old fake it before you make it type thing. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think it's too much of a small community for that to happen. Yeah. So that's level one is like you get a bit of a deal, you get a bit of a discount, you do a little bit of promotion. Cool, mm -hmm. you're on the first rung of the ladder. The next rung of the ladder is generally you're moving into brand territory then. Yep. And a brand will offer you some sort of deal. So again, whatever it comes with, whatever your contract might be, in relation to a, a budget for the year. So that budget might be from roughly in the UK, probably the smallest budgets you might be on is probably about 500 quids worth of retail free yeah. stuff. Yeah. Going through to, I'd say some of the big brands, some of the deals that I know about will be up in the like retail, six grand a year, six yeah. to seven grand a year of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just your kit, your budget, and you get to go online, order whatever rods, lures, whatever your company does. And, and they send it to you for free, but they obviously they want a higher profile mm -hmm. and they want, you know, generally more stuff. Yep. But there's a caveat in that because one of the misconceptions out there, and I see this online all the time, is that, oh, the brands are making them do it. Yeah. The brands are forcing the anglers because they're under so much pressure to produce a picture of a fish. And then when an angler goes off and does something a bit naughty or catches one on a live bait and sticks a lure in its mouth, it's the brand's fault. <laughs> it ain't. It and if it ain't. is the brand, you're with the wrong brand. 100%. Right? I, it just doesn't work like that. Yeah. So that's one of the misconceptions. But that's layer two. And then when you get up to layer three, and this surprises a lot of people in the UK now, there are more opportunities in the UK and they've only been popping up for the last 24 months of uh, brand uh, budget. So yeah. for kit and money, yeah. cold, hard cash yeah. for just being a sponsored angler. Yeah. All right. And now I think it's really encouraging because mm -hmm. it obviously gives a state of 
what where lure fishing is, how much it's growing in the industry, um, which is absolutely fantastic. But I've spoken to people and they're like, I've been in the lure game 20 years. I didn't even know that people were actually getting yeah. paid money anymore. Yeah. And again, that can be from maybe a few hundred pounds for a year, mm -hmm. few through to quite a few thousand quid for a year, yeah. right? And so they're the different layers. Let's call it layer one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. And as you go up through that journey, it's about profile, it's about notoriety, it's about respect, it's mm -hmm. about audience, mm -hmm. it's about all of that sort of stuff, yeah. you know? Um, so that's I think that's a fairly good objective outline mm -hmm. for people to get that because yeah. if you're coming in at the wrong layer or you're pretending to be a wrong layer yeah. you do not do yourself any favors yeah because people know yeah. you know um and and i think it's a sense of respect as well you have mm -hmm. to respect that you earn your way up that ladder yeah yeah um, you've explained it beautifully yeah you have and i think you're right because um it's if you're not careful you'll lose the the why you're going fishing. Yeah. That is one of and, the other caveats. And as yeah. soon as you do that, you lose the love of the sport mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you're doing it for other reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I know lots of anglers who have gone down that path and they don't go anymore because they felt they weren't fishing. They were then trying to produce results for a camera. Or yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, if you're doing that, then you've got completely the wrong angle. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah. keep it real, be authentic, be yourself. Yeah. And, so what if you don't it doesn't matter if you're, mm. if, if you're a promotional angler and you enjoy doing it great yeah. if you want to work your way higher great but listen to Tom's advice mm. but keep it real be authentic and enjoy it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and like yeah. You, the story you tell you did you're very you're, you've got a high level of integrity mm. with other people and yourself so I'd you, like to think so yeah, yeah. I, I know you quite well now mm. and you have and, that, and I think that's a strength for people and you make decisions because sometimes you base it on your integrity. Oh, mate. And you've done this. This is, honestly, this, this level, it is, it is the worst. People think they're making the right decision. Mm -hmm. So, like, a brand comes along and says, uh, right, uh, you're at level one. I'm going to give you a discount. Mm -hmm. And then within six months, someone else thinks, oh, yeah, I've seen that guy. He's got quite a good Instagram following. Different brand might come in over the top and go, yeah. you know, a bit like Luke did. He came up to me and said, you're happy at Gunky? Mm -hmm. You know, and you might have another competing brand come yeah. up. Now, if you blow smoke up your own ass and go, oh, my God, everyone's after me. This is the most amazing thing. And you, you misalign yourself with where you're at. Yeah. You kill your integrity, yeah. right? And if you come along and you're a brand and you come over the top of the brand I'm with and go, oh, I'll, I'll offer you something different. And I go, oh my God, amazing, right. I'm dumping you now. Mm -hmm. I'm with you now. Mm -hmm. One, the public looks at you and goes, two minutes ago you were wearing that cap and yep. promoting that brand. Yep. And now you're promoting this one. Oh, and then if you keep doing that, you're likely to be the guy that promotes the next one six months later. Plus, the community's too small. I've already upset you. Yes. And it's likely yeah. that I'm going to upset you for the next person as well. Yeah. yeah. And you, you either go through the brands too quick, you misalign yourself with how, how good you think you are or mm -hmm. where what level you're at, what you can provide, and the public are looking at you and they don't have any trust either. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you guys asked me before I come in, did I want to bring any Western lures in, whatever. Mate, I don't do... I'm a salesman as well. Yeah. I don't do a hard sell because no. I don't need to do a hard sell. Yeah. Because when I talk to you about crankbait fishing and you say to me, what, what's it all about? And I tell you all about it and I go into detail and you say to me, what's the best one? I go, Western Buzz Bite. That's what I catch most on. I can list 10 of them. But if you're only going to get one, it's, what, it's the Buzz Bite. I don't need to like, be like showing the camera, I'll oh, get the Buzz yeah, Bite, yeah. point this, that and yeah. the other. Like, I'll tell you what I use. I'll tell you what works and I'll tell you why it works. And I'll also tell you when it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then people go, ah, I can believe this dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can trust, because that is the biggest thing yeah. in a sponsorship role. People <clears throat> think that you're going to pull the wool over their eyes to get a sale. Yeah. They couldn't, couldn't care less. Weston sells itself anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'll tell you a tell about Weston. So yeah, I, was, I went to Sportfish Madison and um, um, I was, it was on my little path of shads. I was yeah. using big shads for pipe fishing. I was at the start of the journey and it was, I don't know how I met Wolf Creek. I just met the guys at Wolf Creek and I was looking at, it's when the pig shad was out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, CWC. CWC. It was a long yeah. time ago. And uh, I bought some of these Western shads that had, they don't, 
I, I won't say it. Right. So I bought these Western Shads and I took them and they are, they were dynamite. Come on, don't be a tease. They were, I was destroying on certain waters, the pike, but I only had three and I'm re-gluing them back together <laughs> and one colour, one of them worked better than the rest it's gone. Oh God. So I've, I'm, the following year, I'm back at Sportfish Masson at the Westin Booth. Where's the Shads? And I explained to the guy, I said, where are they? He said, uh, we stopped making them. I said, why? And he went, they were that well, we kept them for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I went, no, I, went, I don't blame you. I said, it, they, made, they had a slightly different version, but it wasn't oh. quite sustainable because it didn't have... And, oh, was, really? and he said, yeah, he said, sometimes if we design something, if sometimes you just got to keep it. <laughs> That's a true, <laughs> a, a true <laughs> angler with an edge, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leaving a lot of money on the table. Me up, they did, but, oh, you wouldn't blame them. If, they, if yeah. you've got something, yeah. it was... I've still got it. I won't really? use it because it's like, I can't use that. No, it's got to stay there. But yeah, <laughs> this particular look. I imagine he's probably winding you yeah, up a bit. Yeah, as I well, imagine why. Yeah. I'd like to think mm. he wasn't. Yeah, because I'd like yeah. to think they discovered this kind of unicorn bait. <laughs> <laughs> there is no, there is no, no. you know, unicorn it, it bait. Tickle, but but, yeah. In my head, I'm going, oh, I've got to get some more of those. Where are they? Because I couldn't find them online. I don't even know what they were called. Mm. It's like, you, sometimes you see things at a show. <laughs> and, uh, oh, haven't got them. Yeah. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> it's, it's funny, though, going back to, like, the companies and their relationships with their different tiers of anglers and things. I think, um, I think we've both all three of us separately have spoken about this and um, I'll be a little bit candid about it we'll talk about it openly Fox has probably been the biggest trendsetter when it comes to taking on sponsored anglers in the prior to the last 12 months and there was a big movement a few months ago where they took on a lot of guys all at once and I think uh, quite openly a lot of social media there's a lot of Mickey taking and a lot of going yeah. well you know taking everyone and it but we've spoken about this, and I actually quite like the idea. Whether this is why they've done it, this is my interpretation of it. And I quite like the way they've, they've done it from a company's point of view. Because what they've done is they've, they've taken on a lot of different people. And I know a lot of these people separately and individually. And they've all got different deals, right? So there's tiers within their yeah, and yeah. what they're getting. And in my mind, from a business point of view, what I think Top Fox has done is going, tell you what, we're big enough that we can go, we'll have all of you here for a second. Yeah. One of you might be that diamond in a rough. One of you is going to yeah, just yeah. take that little step and you're going to step up and you're going to be, you're already one of us now. We've been looking after you for a little while yeah, and we've got you at the ground level. And it's like, it's like having a youth academy. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, you've got lots of them and a handful of them will go boop and yeah. then there'll be that next big thing. And you've I, just, so fr- I would only say from Fox's point of view or any brand's yeah. point of view, you have to weigh up the risk reward yeah. ratio. Yeah. So you might get one diamond in the rough, mm-hmm. but it depends how much rough you've got that's devaluing your brand. Yeah, of course. Because if you get one in a thousand, you've got 999 guys not representing your brand mm-hmm. that well to get lucky one time. If yeah, it's yeah. one in five, that's a better ratio. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 and yeah. it's like you've also got to, depending on the style of brand, different brands have different values. Mm-hmm. You know, so like Westin would never do that because we're a different brand. Yeah. We value different things. Yeah. You know, so like when I, as a sales agent now, I go around and Westin will never be the first Predator uh, uh, brand in a shop. No. I'm looking for it to be like somewhere between the fifth and the eighth brand mm-hmm. because Westin is a premium product. Yeah. It's high on quality. You pay a little bit more in price, mm-hmm. but... So it's not necessarily like down the middle for your beginner. Yeah. But you've got other brands that offer 30 to 60 quid rods yeah. and cheaper reels and stuff. And they're aiming at a different demographic. Mm-hmm. And they're the brands that go in and they've got huge reach. They do huge volume. and But they're, di- ju- they're different, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. completely different horses for courses. And mm-hmm. so you've got to try and get a marketing strategy, I think, that aligns with your brand. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, I mean, like, everyone gets to pick their poison, don't they? And sometimes you might have to take a bit of flack for that. And yeah. sometimes you're leaving a bit on the table. Like, at Weston, we've only got a few people on the team. They're all yeah. super high quality. Yeah, yeah. But I am thinking to myself, do we leave stuff on the table? Because we haven't got the... Vo- like, we could have maybe six or eight people. We've got four or five, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, we've stuck to the quality, <coughs> but are we missing out on some volume but there? The reality is, like, again, we've had these conversations off camera before... For, if you're looking for that level, right, so if you're looking at what we're calling tier three for, for today's purpose, yeah. 
It's quite slim pickings in the UK. The, yeah. It is. Yeah. If you really want someone who truly understands what it takes to be at that level, yeah. it's only a handful. You probably count on one hand yeah. how many really, really suit that and could could quite easily step in for most brands and go, that's my, I, can, I understand the role, I know yeah. what you want from me, and I can do it on a regular basis and do it well. This is, right, so this is going to come into the category of misconceptions yep. again. Because there is a misconception out there. So I get this, fishing at the peak with Team England mm. and also like being high up with yep. a brand like Westin. Yep. You get a few misconceptions of people out there going, my mate's really good at fishing. Yep. He could be in the England team. My mate's really good at fishing. He could be in the Westin team. Mm -hmm. Right. So the misconception is that it's entirely down to talent and you must you get this in the match yep. fishing world as yep. well because it's a similar thing yeah. what i think people don't quite understand is you need the the profile so under profile you're going to have like your audience your integrity your skill level mm -hmm. your notoriety your results mm -hmm. right that is like so when i filmed xander pro it became super super aware for me yep. that it was like 40 percent fishing skill Mm -hmm. It was about 40% story. So it's people like Klaus, people like Fred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. very good at the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Classic example, Fly versus Jerk. Fred's fishing with Nicholas Bauer one year. Yeah. They caught, Surface or was it baits. Perch something? Surface Baits only, wasn't yes. it? Or yeah. Perch Pro, yeah. Perch Pro it yeah. was, right? Yeah. They caught hardly anything. Yeah. They were the most memorable pair yeah. of the whole thing because the they gave so much story. Yeah, I said at the time, once that series finished, that particular one, I forget which year it was. I think I might have even said it to you. If you could have, at the end of that, knowing what they've caught, knowing they've caught next to nothing, yeah. all, if you ever asked me which boat would you want to have been on, it would have been that boat. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. 100%. Forget the big fish, it's about the experience. Exactly. And the story. Exactly. So story, story, experience. Yeah. You know, so you've got like skill set level and the actual, because most of them are built up as tournaments. Yeah. Uh, so you've got like, there's 40% of that, there's 40% of story, character, mm -hmm and like you know making it fun to watch yeah. and then there's about 20% brand because the brands pay for it yep. the brands pay yep. cold hard cash yep. and you've got to understand it from their view yeah. they've, they, they're doing it as a marketing strategy they want some return on it it's you not know. cheap either I, I, I mean I don't know exactly I've heard a few years ago what it was costing then so I imagine now it's even more it's and eye watery yes, expensive yeah. Yeah. and so you, you, like you say they've got to get a return from it otherwise what's yeah. the point in doing it yeah. they're doing it for fun Exactly. It's a, they're a business. But there's a, I thought it was interesting, is that um, we're talking about something that we perhaps wouldn't have spoken about three years ago. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And this is yeah. what fascinates me, yeah. is I think it's great that these companies, whether they be uh, the major brands, mm -hmm. or whether they just be, not just be, it's, it's a tackle shop, so you've got a level, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's great that um, we're getting input from every level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it shows that the sport's on the up. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. I mean, I talk about America sometimes. Look over there; it's just absolutely crazy the sponsorship. But bass fishing's massive. Yeah, isn't it's because it? the money's because there. Because the money. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, I noticed seven eight years ago it started to creep into Europe. Sweden was primarily bait anglers fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was the it was basically middle aged to old men bait fishing. Mm -hmm. If you go over there now. It's women are involved in the sport. It's young kids. It's families. Yeah. It's totally changed. It's got it used to be super pike heavy as well. Yeah. And now it's a lot more perch, a lot more yeah. Xander. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Truman about this. He said the change in the last 15 years has been amazing. Mm. And I said, What's, what started it? He said, I think it was the fact that we had a, some American business started to drip feed into Europe with the boats yeah. and the engines, which made it a little bit more cool. Yeah. But Very also, cool. Sw the Swedes started to re-engage with their environment. Mm -hmm. Right. Which you're thinking, but weren't they always? No, they've re engaged. Mm -hmm. It became trendy to start mm -hmm. having the outdoor activities. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again. right. Okay. And I think 1.6 Swedes go fishing now, and 0.8 of a million play football. 1.6 million? 1.6 million go fishing, right. 1.8 million play football. Really? Which is amazing. So in Very Scandinavia, popular. we've had this big input of yeah. uh, money, finance, uh, sponsorship, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think now we're on the back end of that. Yeah. Mm. And it's great because. It's still very small over here, but it's growing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think we're on the upward, we're on the up. upward slope. And it's yeah. that's why I think this YouTube promotional thing is very new. So you yeah. get the injection of money and brand. Mm -hmm. It starts to become cool. People are driving around on sweet boats, and they got yeah. cool jerseys with different logos on and stuff like that. 
But that territory, I don't think has been... They haven't nailed it no. like America have nailed it. Totally agree. And I think the number one thing that they're missing out of, and I've had really cool, interesting conversations with Fred Julian about this, because mm-hmm. he's a real forward thinker. And the bit that's on... So when you watch a Fly versus Jerk, a Pike Pro, a Xander Pro, whatever they are, they are virtually all team-led. So it's yeah. like... Let's go from this team to this team to this team and there's a little bit of voiceover. Yeah. If you look at the American format, it's studio. You have a studio because you have professionals yeah. holding the program yeah. we'll, we'll and they can tell you yeah. when you go to, ah, oh, let's go and check out Kevin Van Dam now because he's caught this one. Yeah. Let's go and watch, you know, Mike Iaconelli do this. Uh, then it comes back. Then there's a cool graphic and underwater, mm-hmm. oh yeah, he's fishing around stumps and he's fishing a jig and yeah. yada, yada, yada. And that makes a program. Yeah. At the moment, I feel our programs are just a little bit thin because yeah. you're asking the anglers in each team. Some of them do really well. Your Freds and your Klauses and whatever, they can hold it. Mm-hmm. Other teams don't and they're thinning it out quite yeah. a bit. And the yeah. language, they're having exactly. to speak in second language. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be fair, that's amazing that they can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could we, I couldn't. No. <laughs> and they're having to engage an audience while they're fishing yeah. in a second language. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, it's great when you've got that panel of brains analysing things for yeah. you and showing you, you go, oh. That's proper pro level yeah. then. That what, makes sense. Studio. And it's and like watching yeah. Sky Sports football, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. You have your pundits yeah. and you have your... Because yeah. then you've got the game. You get all the entertainment from the game anyway, yeah. but it's not just a game. That's the difference between going and watching your local football club and standing yeah. in a little stadium, yeah. Yeah. you know, on a cold Saturday afternoon and then watching something on Sky Sports with a studio and it's all yeah. mega and yeah. whatever. That's the difference. And I think we can... We can work towards that. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's exciting times. Yeah, there's a there's a whole wealth of opportunity out there for people yeah. who are prepared to work hard at it mm-hmm. and uh, improve the attributes that they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's the that's the secret, yeah. isn't it? Uh, I think what we're trying to explain <coughs> to people is you can't just ex- do this, this, and this and expect that. No. Yeah. No. And influencers is a, another topic, totally, isn't it? Really, yeah. which is something I really struggle with because I'm old school. Yeah. So I, my background is the old Pike world where nobody spoke to each other yeah. about anything. About anything. <laughs> Secret and it was, And now I'm looking at people who have been fishing three or four years and they've got all these... I'm thinking, but they don't know. They can't know because you, you learn so much over a long period of time. Yeah, have done their apprenticeships. Yeah. 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 But I'm not right. No. Because well, it, again, it depends where you're standing yeah, at and what you're looking yeah, at. But yeah. you see... As a tackle company, I would want to have people who are going to show the brand to lots of people. Mm-hmm. So getting my head around influences is quite tricky for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you have to, don't be a dinosaur, evolve. Yeah, I yeah. Things change. I, I think, like, it's, you know, just sort of circling back to that, like, oh, my mate's really good. He could be in the England team or he could be sponsored. It's like, it's just actually... Um, a, it's, a, it's slightly ignorant in some way. You're you're commenting on part of the industry, which is a, a very tiny subsection. It's like, I know people that are amazing at angling. Mm. And if I was in charge of a brand, I wouldn't touch them with a nope. barge pole. <laughs> they are radioactive yeah. <laughs> online. Like they're really abrasive mm. or they drop a load of narky comments the whole yeah. time. And it's just like, Mate, you're not going to have a brand that turns over millions of pounds take you on as a liability so that you could represent yep. that brand badly or be a so Like, there's one example I can think of in particular. The brand isn't a big brand, mm. and I still can't believe that... And I am not a cancel culture guy, no. but there, there was an incident during lockdown that was like eye-wateringly embarrassing and it was even more embarrassing that the anglers didn't get dropped that exactly. the brand stood with them and I was like that is like next level of brave yeah. or stupid for me I think it was at that point the brands had not I know exactly the, the instance you're talking about and they had an option they either ignored it like it never happened <laughs> yeah. just, just going, la, 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 or they, they made a point and I think that yeah. they opted to close their eyes and hope yeah. to go away <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I haven't got a clue what they're on about. I'll tell you later. <laughs> but we're going, and, we're going to the pub soon. Yeah, and I I'll, ain't. <laughs> and I'll find out the gossip. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, because I ain't no angel. No. And it's like, I've bent and done a few things that maybe you shouldn't have done in the past and all that sort of stuff. We've all pulled but, um, but that one in particular was like, as a story goes, mm. it's a cracker, and it, yeah. but it's for the pub. Yeah, yeah. it's for the pub, yeah. 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 Um, um, I'm yeah. conscious of the time. Yes. Uh, but yeah. we're going to keep this a little bit shorter. Um, I think just to wrap up, unless Charlie wants to add anything, Tom, listen to your journey. Yeah. The game is amazing. And I think it's, ri- I personally think it's a longer journey, but it's the right one to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think for people listening who would like to promote themselves up through the industry, they couldn't go, they couldn't go far wrong by listening to what you've done. Mm. Because it's about being authentic, keeping your integrity. And at the end of the day, keeping grounded is fishing. Mm. Yeah, isn't it? Mm. We love it. It's we're, we're passionate about it, but you don't want to ever lose. Get, you don't want to lose the excitement of going. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, for me, I, 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 I don't. I never seem to do things in a, in, a, in a normal way, but that's just life. And listening to how you've actually targeted things. Yeah, and you've done it in a very methodical, planned way. That's um, embracing the community of their companies. Mm. I think that's really important as well. Yeah. Well, I think one sort of caveat to that, though, is to say it was right for me. Yeah. There's a load of different strategies out there. There's some that I just 100%, and I could explain the, partly explain the reasons why, that I don't think it's a good strategy. But everyone's free to, to pick their own mm-hmm. choices and make their own decisions and whatever. Um, I just know, like, there's probably a bit in this, which is, like, self-auditing. I knew who I was, I knew what my values were, I knew what my objectives and my goals were, mm. and I wanted to create a, a, um, an experience and relationships that aligned with that to get me where I wanted to go. If you've got different objectives, you know, people can do loads of different stuff out there, yeah. but it just, it worked well for me, you know, so it's worth expanding on that to recommend certain things, but, you know... You, as a human being, doesn't matter whether you're in fishing or anything, you can't go far wrong doing the basics. Yeah. Be trustworthy, be a half decent bloke, be honest, mm. you know, have communicate well. Uh, that just there's a few general things I that you would miss out. That, but one that you do really well, you work hard at things. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you can't look at Ronaldo. Mm. There's a reason. I know he's incredibly talented and messy. They they will be the last ones off the training pitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that we off air. You, Tom was telling us all the things that he's doing at the minute, and he's just working so hard. Yeah, yeah. Charlie, it's unbelievable what he does. He's just working so hard. And uh, I look back at things that I've done in life, and the biggest, the things that I look back with the most pride are the things that took the longest to mm-hmm. achieve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the things I had to work the hardest at. Yeah. Because absolutely. You know, th- very few of us get the opportunity but given things. And I think if you're given things, does it mean that much? Mm. Well, it also seems like that from the outside. Yeah. Someone goes, oh, you know, because we can't, or I can't, I, I know you quite well, I know you quite well. I don't know everything you no. do. I know you work with the boxes, I know you go fishing a lot, I know, I know you've got a tattoo business, mm. I know roughly all the stuff, but I don't know on an hour by hour basis. No who he's talking to, what he's getting up to, how hard he's working and stuff like that. And that's someone that I know. Mm. So it's, it's very difficult to like see underneath those layers sometimes. Mm. And mate, sometimes people get a free ride and they get thrown a bone and they get an easy one. And sometimes you've got to work your socks off for years. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it is a, it's an interesting topic. It, it opens up a whole other thing as well. We could probably go on forever and ever and ever about it. And, and I'd love to hear others' opinions on it, what they think on uh, the concept of a sponsored angler, whether they knew what we were talking about today or whether they didn't. I'd be interested to know. Because mm. it, it's hard. Because you only speak to your little circle of people that you know. And generally, within your little circle, you're all roughly know the same thing. So I'd love to hear from people watching yeah. what, what you knew, what you thought you might have been, and whether you've learned anything by listening to what we spoke about today, you know, I'll tell you concept. what you ought to do at one point. I, I Tom will be perfect if he's up for it. If somehow and te- <laughs> the tech, because if everyone can see the other side, yeah. Like yeah. If we could do a live oh, podcast with people great. phoning in with questions, yeah. that would be fun. I mean, me and you've done lives on Facebook before where we've had people comment yeah, in yeah, and yeah. things and like that. Yeah, they drop so, in questions yeah, below. We, Streamyard's we, really good. Yeah, for yeah, you yeah, yeah. That. We did the Q and A last summer. Yeah, yeah. Thought, hey, it was amazing. Yeah. I don't know how you managed to do that. So I don't know. We'll have to. We'll, 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 we'll do it. I'd love to do a 
or something that if we can just grow this a bit because yeah, yeah, yeah. as Tom's talks I have so my brain's popping mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking mm, yeah. stop because otherwise we'll go on for another three hours yeah. and uh, but I think it'd be great if you're up for it yeah mate yeah. totally yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, yeah if we could somehow I don't know how we're going to do this but we'll chat about it in the, yeah. in the pub that's why I moved that cup yeah. because I knew <laughs> at one point Ba-ding. I was going to pull all over you um, yeah maybe that's something for the future but yeah guys get in touch with comments let us know what you thought about what we were saying today and if you do have any, any comments or questions, Tom's brilliantly active on social media. Drop some comments here. Tom, I'm sure, will keep a little look on it. And I'll yep. point him in the direction if he needs to, to answer any questions or anything you want to specifically ask Tom. Uh, he can try and get some questions after you in the comments. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, chaps. Thanks for inviting me. It's been Brilliant. fun. And thank you for your time. If people mm. could see how much time Charlie puts into this, because he is doing all the travelling. Yeah, all the time. Well, mate, how that van still keeps going? <sighs> it's a. Oh, yeah, it's it's a it's I know. I, I was in it, absolutely sick as a dog before Christmas. Oh, yeah. We we had a bit of a night out, a Christmas do, and I can't drink very much anymore. And I went over the top. We got a bit excited, didn't we? Yeah. We started getting Ash Costa Ash was getting was the rum and something, rum and, rum and cokes. Yeah, yeah. And mate, I woke up in the morning, I was chundering, it was horrendous. And I had to sit in his little van. He was he was driving us home. I was rough that day. We were meant to be going fishing. I was like, we was I just talking. sat in the van all day, I was like, just trying not to be sick. <laughs> I found I found the canal on the way back. I was like, Tommy fishing. He was like, No, no, just leave me here. <laughs> he just curled up under his coat and I just left him in the van and I went fishing for 40 minutes. <laughs> Brilliant. But again, that's what I mean. We could go on all these different stories with Tom. There's, there's lots to be spoken about, and I'm sure we can do it in the future. Um, Good times. I don't know if I can't remember if we said it today in this episode yet or not, but remember, enter the competition for the lure giveaway. Tom's adding some Western bits to it, so it's getting bigger and bigger. Grab a screenshot of this podcast, any podcast, stick it on your Instagram story, tag us, the Lure Fishing Podcast, on Instagram. We'll be announcing four different winners on Monday, May 30th, uh, in the 10th episode. Yeah, brilliant. So, everybody, like and share. Get the podcast out there. The bigger mm. reach we have, the more people we can have watching, the more things we can bring on board. Yeah. Thank you again. Cheers, Tom. Thank, thank you. you Cheers, guys. Cheers, Andy. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Cheers, See guys. You See you soon. Bye.